And a very good morning once again and welcome to the late night broadcast as we continue with the conversation. Moki will go along and say, Pay, Shida Dani, and Bali, to repay. It's been almost a few hours that we had our program, and as we continue, we say good morning. It is Koiki Media Live, it is just coming up to 1 30 a.m. in London, precisely. As we look at the topic that we are discussing again tonight, we continue to ask ourselves, how visible is Nigeria that a lot of you love so much? Nigeria is at the verge of breaking up, but it would take some time before that could happen because there's a lot in Nigeria that we need to find out whether 
in 2023. With the debt ratio that Nigeria has at the moment, and likewise with the current state of things. In general, Nigeria, my work has been the question. She and Birawa. Nigeria has a lot of debt, and these debts continue to pile up. So, Taba Wu. A quality tale tiafe fibarawa teko. It is just the same thing that a lot of people are asking. How much more can Nigeria survive based on the trajectory, based on the question that so many people continue to ask? Can Nigeria work? And if it's going to work, how long more is it going to take before it will finally break? Whether people like it or not, Nigeria is now stressed out, especially with the debt that Nigeria has on its head. And even the federal government is aware of that. But as usual, those that will probably not believe that Nigeria is coming to the final part is those that still think, for whatever reason, that Nigeria is going to work. I don't believe that that is going to change. We will not be able to change their mindset. Some think that by bringing in a new political party, this is going to solve our problem. It is not going to solve the problem because the problem is big. Mokiba Baba Professor Adebanji Akitoye and the rest of all the leaders that are directing the affairs of the Yoruba nation struggle, from the YSDM to Chief Dr. Sondik Bowo and the rest of so many other groups around the world that are looking at the main reason why the Yoruba people should exit Nigeria at this particular time. But your politicians are not going to give room for that. Your politicians are aware, aware that keeping Nigeria is not visible. But for them, it is visible because that is where they make a lot of money from. Politics in Nigeria is a big investment. And if anybody thinks that you would tell an average Yoruba politician or the Igbo politician or the Aousa politician that we should all break away from Nigeria and they will buy into that, you must be living in denial. All the politicians in Nigeria are aware, aware that Nigeria is stressed out. And it has been like that because when Nigeria was making money, there was no investment in the country. And that literally means that money was made and they were squandering that money as if tomorrow is not going to come. Once again, a very good morning and welcome to the live transmission. It is now the 12th day of May, 2023. It is a Friday at exactly 1.44 a.m. Muki Mugwenyi Inyawati Endara Pomowa Muki Masby TV Molobe Muki Yalalu Barika Timotula Fani Atipa Onoda Grama Soro Odi Grama Meji Ani opolopo awon eyan wa nita bela ni awon opolopo awon eyan wa ninu le ti olukaloku ni impact to play when it comes to the 165 billion dollars according to the world bank tan sense le mukiya wa falasha de ojo 
mo fi towo towo daruko e lo anki grammar dada olorun ba nje ki wo pe fun wa a ma ri won ba ben mo ki gbogbo awon elite and those that are still in support of this country called nigeria nigeria debt is not going anywhere soon rather the debt is going to increase as the new government takes place that is if all goes as planned because nobody knows what is going to happen between now and the 29th day of may we can all speculate but nobody will be able to understand that these crazy politicians always have one step ahead of every one of us you might think that there will be may 29 and there might not be and if there's may 29 there's always eating agenda because everybody knows that nigeria is in a deep mess for 63 years nigeria failed to invest in so many sectors from the healthcare sector the security industries the road networks but one of the most major investments for any country in the world is the people and since 1963 till date you will continue to hear that nigerians are attending university polytechnics and technical school but the quality of all these individuals is not up to the standard of the international community that does not literally mean that we do not have nigerians that are doing very well but these nigerians are indigenous people but we have all been told that we are nigerians and the indigenous part of who we are we should abandon that and we should all try to fix a crazy country that the politicians doesn't even believe in the first place the nigerian politicians are all guy man and guy woman they are all frosters from the north to the south to the middle belt to the southeast to the southwest to all the 36 states including the fct whether they are women whether they are new to the politics whether they are old every single one of them are born bastard they are frosted because they know that they are working on a fraudulent document called the 1999 constitution and that constitution itself is a fraud is a scam but how we were able to be deceived for a very long time is what a lot of people are asking but that is subject to poverty which we're going to come back to that later so when people say that we are going to fix these monster known as the green white green when some people think that fixing nigeria will bring a better opportunity and a better life for anyone within the 774 local government you must be crazy because your politician care less about what is most of them don't even live in the state most of these bomb bastard politicians whether they are yoruba they are Igbo, they are Aousa, they are fulanese they are middle belt they hardly live in their own local government every one of them wants to live in an eyebrow area in lagos state where they then come back to the state do what they have to do and return back imagine your house of representative doesn't live within your community and this is somebody that you are expecting to come and fix some of your problems most of them have houses within the vicinity but trust me at about two o'clock this morning none of them are living in their community they are living it's those that can afford it in abuja and those that cannot afford it have turned lagos to the small london some of them will probably even spend the weekend outside nigeria and if they are currently in Nigeria, they spend weekend attending parties. These are the people 
that we are relying on to come and help us, give us the destiny and the opportunity that we are looking forward to. Let's just assume that Nigeria failed from 1960 up to 1999. How much more do we need from 1999, which is approximately about 24 years ago, before we can even start to talk about development? Do we need another 24 years, making it 48 years? The debt is not coming down because the democracy that the politicians took away from the military is not as different from how the military destroy what is called Nigeria. It does not matter what or how you think about it. We had a good system. We had a system that was agreed by the Saudana Azikiwe, Tafabalewa, and our own icon of Bafemi Awulowo, right here in London. These agreements was to give the Yoruba people the best part of the Nigeria then. And that worked up to the some extent. It worked up to some extent. But it eventually failed along the line. Some have put the blame of the failure on some of these brothers and sisters from the Southeast. But let me always clarify this. The West known as the Western power, the British, the Americans, the France, the Canada, knew that the constitution that was drafted here that led to the 1960 independent of Nigeria, knew that they were not ready to allow Nigeria to stand on its own. So whether, whatever you think that destroyed the regional government, I can assure you, as Buhari will always say, that the West knew much about it. There is no coup that occur in Nigeria that the international community do not know about. The development of the people buys into the country. We have enough to take care of every one of us. We have enough that the government of Nigeria could have been paying benefit to each and every single one of us, regardless of whether you're working, because those that are working are also entitled to, to one benefit or the other from any government around the world. If you look at those that are living in different parts of the globe, especially in the western part of this country, you realize that even a working mother with six figures still have entitlement from the government. But Nigerians believe that their own entitlement has to be in their religious center where they can be given holy water and spiritual water to cleansing whatever is wrong with them. Depth in Nigeria is not coming down anytime soon. But the question is for those that still argue and say that Nigeria will be fixable, it just needs the right individual, the right set of people. My question to them also is how do you tell? the northern part of Nigeria that is thinking backwards. How do we tell the southwest part of Nigeria that believes in the corrupt system that is currently being run in Nigeria? 
how do you say to those in the southeast politicians that are as much as criminals than any other part so all these are reasons why we are saying it does not matter how long it will take Nigeria is coming to an end don't fool yourself don't be deceived by the IMF the World Bank all they've done is to make sure that Nigeria remain as one block because the breakup of Nigeria is going to be a new world order. Should Nigeria remain the way it is, the new world order is not going to come up. You are going to be fooled by different countries giving us the deceit, the lies that Nigeria is doing very well. But everybody knows that Nigeria debt profile is becoming unsustainable. Even the Director General of the Budget Office has lament. If our debt profile is becoming alarming, what do we do? How do we sort the problem out? It is not the first time that we are hearing why Nigerians rising debt profile shows that the country is completely broke. Nigeria is broke and it is not going to be rectified anytime soon. But there are so many Nigerians that would never understand this path that Nigeria is broke. But those that will probably feel the pinch at the masses, your politicians have enough money to run them for eight years and they will continue to steal more from the budget because the budget is what funds a country. At the moment, Nigeria has about 11 trillion when it comes to the deficit. But the problem there is your politicians are not going to fail as much. As we kickstart the evening, because it is different time zone in different part of the globe. A very good morning from here in London. Good afternoon if you're listening to us from Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Good evening if you're listening to us from US State of America. Good evening if you're listening to us from Canada. Shout out to everyone that have joined us as we continue the topic Nigeria debt profile continue to rise and the solution to bring it to the extent that we can at least review it is not happening anytime soon we do not own the copyright to this video. This was in January, just about almost three months ago, precisely four months. Let's listen to this. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, says government borrowings are done for capital project expenditures and that it has the ability to remit its obligations to creditors. President uh, Buhari's administration over the years has been under a series of attacks on the country's rising debt levels. 
the government always maintains uh, the debt was revealed, the stipulated ratio based on the country's GDP. However, the International Monetary Fund uh, last week warned that except the federal government put in place adequate measures to improve revenue generation, its entire energy may be spent servicing debt by the year 2026. If you do not understand what this report is saying, We've heard about the IMF telling Nigerian government that if care is not taken, we might remain as poor as a church rat. Expectation of Nigerians, especially to this incoming government, is extremely high. Especially the Yorubas are probably an idiot, gullible doesn't understand how a country operates. There are so many Yorubas that are expecting a lot from a country because a Yoruba man is the president. But what they fail to understand that the debt that has been accumulated since 1999 so we can't put the blame on a particular political party. But the Fulani president and the lawyer, the short man devil, Yemiosi Bajo, have destroyed Nigeria more than even how it has been destroyed by the fraudulent PDP for 16 years. Joining us in the studio now to help us understand if Nigeria is indeed broke, as has been uh, peddled in. Nigeria is very broke, extremely broke. Nigeria has nothing left in its foreign reserve. From information that we are aware of, when Obasanjo left government. Nigeria had about almost $51 billion foreign reserve. But as of today, Nigeria has approximately about 30 something billion dollars. That means that even those of you that would like to send your family abroad, that's quote and unquote if you have the money. Because not everybody has that kind of money so that your child or any of your family members can study abroad, then you will need the dollar because wherever you're sending your children to, Nera is not going to be useful. It's as useless as tissue paper. So even if you have stack amount of Nera in your bank account, you need to transfer dollar to the schools or traveling for whatever reason and that shows that Nigerian banks under the fraudulent CBN is not going to be able to fund your lifestyle. That is even if you don't have anything to do in politics. Not everybody has made their money from politics, but those that even want to enjoy their money, it has been restricted because Nigeria is not ready to allow you the kind of lifestyle that you would like to enjoy outside Nigeria. If you are in Nigeria, it's okay. You can spend 1 million Naira in a hotel. You can spend 10 million Naira, whatever you want to do. But the moment you want to convert that to dollar, which is the money used outside Nigeria, you will not be able to get this kind of money. But if you go to the black market where this has been the operation memorandum or whatever you want to call it for a very long time where black market rather than all skeleton money from the bank we all do the black market from Yaba to Undo State to Abuja where the North has taken advantage of that against the remaining tribes. They are the only one operating the black market and the whole reason is because they've manipulated that for a very, very long time. So if your expectation to travel out of Nigeria 
with your own ad and money or down on my lap to my share way in to repay all one 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 dollar what and let me say this as much as in another 30 years this is the same kind of rhetoric this is the same type of madness where people just come and talk 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 everybody just talk does not mean it's going to give us the final solution they've been talking like this for the last 24 years of the fake democracy nigeria has been talking for the last 63 years project abandoned project has been abandoned across every part of nigeria because those individuals believe nigeria is just a national cake and everybody can just cut out of the cake without thinking of the future of Nigerians. So some has the opportunity. You might see them like this. They'll come on the TV with their big pot belly and they will tell you their economics, their analysts. Nigeria should have done this. Nigeria should have done that. But that has been the rhetoric. It is not new. It is usual. It has always been like that. The people come in, they talk about Nigeria. Nigeria needs to be great. Nigeria can be great. Nigeria will be great. So these red trips continue to be embedded with the average Nigerian. And when you now tell an average Nigeria we should break up, they tell you are crazy. Why do you want to break up when we have been told that Nigeria will be great again? We are the leaders of tomorrow, has always been red tricks. And just to buttress that, maybe we should listen to these individual that a lot of you know, and everybody agrees that they failed us. But since they failed us, it is our responsibility to rectify the problem. Now, you see, you, Abina. You have everything going for you. And I don't want you to feel discouraged. Please, things are bad in Nigeria, but I believe it's only for a short time because it depends on you. Whatever my generation might have done wrong, and I will be the first to admit that my generation has done a lot, a lot wrong. It's for your generation to do it better. And don't just sit down and complain. Don't just sit down and complain. Sitting down and complain is like the anger of the cripple. You're on the same time, you will be on the same ground, on the same level, but you have to be proactive. And you have to make sure you get enough of what I call critical mass of people, like-minded people who will be ready to say, yes, we can bring about a change. And you can bring about a change if you get the uh, critical mass of people that are ready to slog it out. I always say when people say, hey, well, when will this old hag go out of the way politically. They won't go out of the way. You have to make them go out of the way. They won't voluntarily go out of the way. You have to make it uncomfortable for them. I'm not talking of violence, but bringing, bringing pressure to bear to make it uncomfortable for them. They will go out of the way. So that is the former president, Olusha Gombasanjo, Telling us the mumu that are thinking that one day all these bomb bastards will go out of the way. But they're never going to go out of the way. They are always ready to stay in power as much as possible. 
but something always stopped them. I will tell you why I say so. But let's go back to this video. Vector Poros Capital. Good morning and welcome. So, is Nigeria broke? Nigeria is broke? It was never. We are trying to make the distinction for us. Yes. Um, very, very broke. Uh, if you look at the numbers, you know, I laugh when people try to draw this um, depth the analogy. Within Nigerian economies that are other depth of economies. Look at the budget performance of the We spent 2.9 billion naira. Have you seen the existing debt? But the first quarter of 2022, we spent 96 billion. If you project it, we spend about 3.5 billion. 2020, have you seen our debt, debt services? Now, if you look at that budget, it's predicated on a 6.25 a budget deficit which will require fresh borrowing outside the 40 something trillion that we already have in existence. But I look at it critically. We have 6.86 trillion naira recurrent expenditure. Out of this 6.86 trillion, 4.11 trillion is supposed to be used to take care of less than 900,000 political office holders and the civil servants. Just oppose this, you will see clearly. That if you add 6.86 trillion, we projected 3.56 trillion. We have over 10.3 trillion naira that we're going to be wasted in debt and non debt required expenditure. In a country based on the past budget performance that may not generate up to 6 trillion naira in both oil and non oil revenue. I want us to follow this discussion and uh, let me remind us that our data from the OECD which the man is talking about these beautiful data in front of us right now the chunk part of the red says crude oil or crude petroleum that is the major revenue of this mad country called Nigeria that has been destroyed from the day one by the British by joining us together with so many crazy people that we do not speak the same language and we don't have anything in common if anybody tells you we have something in common with the Igbos, the Awusa, the Ifekiri, it's all lies. Everybody has their own uniqueness. Everybody has their own languages. Everybody has their own culture. But the British did not think otherwise before they joined us together in 1914. That's a different conversation. But look at the graphs. You would expect if we compare this graph with another country that we are not doing so much when it comes to the export this is our export i want you to take a screenshot of this because the bigger part of the export is the crude petroleum next to that is the petroleum gas but let's look at our imports Now you can see that even the biggest chunk of our import, import is what comes into Nigeria. You can see that it is so full up, but the biggest chunk is the refined petroleum. I want you to go back again a step. This is the export. Don't mix it up. Take a screenshot now so that you can have these on your mobile phone. This is our export, something that we send out of Nigeria to other countries around the world. And a big chunk of that export is the crude petroleum that gave us $57.7 .7 billion in 2021. It is not even giving us the full 100% capacity. 
The next part is the petroleum gas, which is also not giving us even up to 50% capacity. Because if Nigeria was working to full maximum capacity, we should have developed our petroleum gas sector so that we can be able to extract as much gas because every part of Nigeria there is gas. I believe even in the north, by the time they do more, you know, exploration, they will find and detect gas. So even the gas is not giving you 20%. It's actually giving us less than 15%. And the raining are just bit by bit. Compare that to the import. This is what comes back into the country. And you can see that the reason why we have a lot of smaller blocks, as let me talk about the raw sugar, we actually import the biggest raw sugar from Brazil, as you can see in this chart. The reason why you are poor, the reason why you are not doing very well, or you want to do, you know, um, crime, or you want to kill like a Yoruba boy that his mother in the Kurodu wanted the boy to be rich, end up killing the younger sister, slept with the dead body until they were all caught in the process of disposing the body. This is what is happening in 2023. This happened in the Kurodu. You can go and read about it online. I haven't got the time to be taking you through that nonsense. This is not in Igbo land. This was in Yoruba, maybe because the Yoruba think that the Igbo has taken their land and he wants to oppress the Igbo by doing spiritual money or whatever. This is the importation of your sugar into Nigeria. You can see that Brazil is sending almost 100% of the sugar from their own country into Nigeria. And maybe if we do something quickly, let's go and look for Brazil. So I'm going to change this country from Nigeria and I'm going to make it to Brazil. So I'm going to search for Brazil as a country, Brazil. And you can also do your own by going to oec.world. So we are looking for Brazil as a country. Once again, a very good morning. And this is Brazil. So we go into the chart of Brazil. Remember that Nigeria export sugar 97.5% from a country called Brazil. These are the reason why you are poor. These are the reason why the country continue to go into a complete mess. So let's come further down and let's just go and see their own data. Now, look at their data. This is again 2021. This is Brazil exports. I want us to take note of, I hope you all have pen and paper. When you listen to my program, if you don't have pen and paper, you're just going to be sitting down and you're not going to catch anything because you will not be, because everyone is so stressed about this mad country and you will lose plot, you will lose your time sitting here for two hours. I want us to take note of the total revenue that came into Brazil in 2021. Brazil had about $288 billion. This was in 2021. Now, Let's go back to Nigeria. We're going to leave this for now. I'm going to open another part of Nigeria, OEC. So let's come here now. Again, this is an historic data that operate for every country around the world. Now, the total that came in for Nigeria in 2021, in that mad country, the whole total in 2021 for Nigeria is 57 
$1.7 billion. You can now see the reason why Nigerians are not going to do better because the projection that Brazil is doing today did not start today. It started long time ago. That process for country to work is not something that will start immediately. Everybody understand that. But it also depends on the dedication of your politics, the constitution. But the most important is the people. Northern Nigerians are not educated. Whether the educated is half big, because a lot of you end up out of university, you cannot even write a basic summary. I don't blame you. I blame the system that has failed you. You can tell that Brazil is exporting a lot. And let's look at the raw sugar. Remember that we export from Brazil, so, but we now want to see where Brazil send their own export raw sugar to. And you can tell, I'm looking for Nigeria there. Where is Nigeria? Yeah, you can tell that even China is doing big sugar from Brazil. Do you know why? Because China end up buying the raw sugar and produce whatever they need to produce out of the sugar and then ship it back to Nigeria because Nigeria is a shit food that doesn't produce anything. But you can tell that we are not the biggest buyer from Brazil looking at this data. But data doesn't tell lies. China is the biggest buyer. Then we can say that Algeria is the next biggest buyer at 7.76%. I believe looking at the numbers and the percentage, Nigeria is number three. Nigeria is number three buying raw sugar that can be used for different production. If you're baking a cake, you need sugar. Even if you're baking a bread, you need a sugar. So sugar goes in different things, but Nigeria cannot have its own raw sugar. That literally means that we have to bring it from Brazil. And these are so many reasons why today Nigerians are praying for miracle, but they are not talking about how is that miracle going to change what Obasanjo told us earlier, that these haggard old men and the young men and women there are not ready to go. So this is Nigeria. So we buy raw sugar what 62.4 percent from brazil 62.4 percent and definitely it's indicated here because it shows here that we are the biggest buyer now let's go back to the video that we were listening to earlier once again you're live on quickie media and welcome once again where's the video now where's my video yeah let's come back again so critically anybody telling you that they are going to fund um capital is deceiving us because okay I, I wanted to get that very well anyone that tells you they are borrowing to to build capital projects they are deceiving us. So if we know that they are deceiving us, why then do we continue to hold these bastards that are holding us backward? Why? Because the reason is because our people do not understand the numbers and the reason behind why, you know, 
Shino Pella, a crazy politician, throws money out during the election. Good evening and good morning to my beautiful mother and welcome to the program. While the politicians continue to throw money into your hands every four, four years, but in the long run, Nigeria is not going to be fixable. Let's continue. Mera, in both oil and non oil revenue. Oil and non oil revenue. Remember, I told you if we come back to our graph here, the two major revenue for Nigeria is the crude oil and the gas. There is no human capacity in this graph. What do I mean by that? 60% of Nigerians are youth. Some of them are probably half-baked educated. But yet, there is no infrastructure to allow us to market you outside as against a country that is less than 7 million called Bulgaria. We looked at Bulgaria some few days ago and we looked at their ICT sector. The Bulgaria ICT sector is the biggest among the European countries and it has actually grown. So let's just look at this data because it's all about the data. When you talk about things, you talk about the data. If you're not talking about the data, it's a waste of time. Let's look at how many Bulgarians were able to be employed in, when we say ICT, some of you don't understand what it means. It's called Information Communication Technology, ICT. So this data, according to Statista, is telling us that the total numbers of people employed between 2010 and 2019, you can tell that under nine years, it has literally climbed up year to year. So looking at this, which everybody can see, from 2010, Bulgaria employed in the ICT, which is called Information and Communication Technology, 54,860. That number did not drop in 2011. That number went up by another 2,000, thereabout, at 56,308. You will expect that maybe the number should drop, but rather it kicked up again in 2012 to 59,377. In 2013, the number went up again at about 62,309. In 2014, it climbs up again to 64,084. In 2015, as you were preparing for your fraudulent Sibaba, that expectation was high at next level, fake level. We will provide jobs. Buhari promised 3 million jobs every, every year. But I'm sure 7 million of you went into abject poverty every year for the last eight years of this madness country called Nigeria under the APC of Yemi Osibadio, the Chutman Devil, and the Buhari, the Fulani Bastard. In 2016, this is the Bulgaria, a country less than Lagos State in terms of numbers. So do we need to be big in size before we can become powerful in the world? Or do we need to be smaller so that we can identify and train people that can then be the next 22nd century generation? Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone that are joining us. And welcome to the live transmission. And we appreciate your time with us. Take time and look at the topic. The conversation tonight is focused on the Nigerian debt and the 1999 constitution. We are reviewing the Bulgaria Information and Communication Technology and want to work employed in the Musa way. I understand I'm speaking a lot of English tonight, but bear with me. 
eyi eyan wa lale ma ma gbigan ti lati so yoruba laani meje draft mo fi won wa is based on the incheti awon ara bogeri an se ton pe ni one this is just one sector by the time to mafi day 2019 the ICT sector, remember that this is not a big country. So even if 92,000 might not be a big number, but if we have 92,000 endurance today helping us to sort problems around the world, which Bulgaria is doing, and I'll explain to you, because like I said, I think on Saturday, I had a call to sky that call was root to bulgaria the woman i spoke to was sitting right in a living room sorting out my problem for my inquiries the same thing can happen in nigeria where you will be sitting in your house and you'll be sorting out inquiries customer service base which is called outsourcing. The whole reason, according to the Bulgaria ICT services sector employment figures, we've given you the breakdown. But what could have made Bulgaria that country that everybody wants to go for outsourcing? So let's find out Bulgaria outsourcing their ITC ICT to the rest of the world let's look at the question people are asking before we go to the top IT outsourcing companies in Bulgaria as of today in Bulgaria a country less than 7 million they have 10,000 companies that are operating as ICT. 10,000. I think somebody explained to us the meaning of 10,000 in Europe the other day. I can't remember now. Bulgaria is a popular outsourcing destination and with a good reason. A mature BPO sector, large talent pool. Take note of that word large talent pool. So let's look for the meaning, the English Dictionary of Talent. Nigerians are good in skits. Maybe we could have been selling that to the rest of the world. But all we do, we sell it among ourselves, we laugh, and everybody, depression goes down for about a few minutes, and then it kicks back again the next day. Talent. If we say... Talent. If we say the word... Talent. A natural aptitude or skill a lot of you are talented in music that we have been able to sell to the world even though not everybody is enjoying that maybe some few you know artists in tour service was in london for the coronation so some of them are lucky to break the market but there's still so many nigerians that could be in the music sector but they have to rely on uh all these bigger artists before they can break through. If Nigeria was a country, they wouldn't need them. All they need to do is to go to, you know, sectors that have been set up by the country and allow you to push out quickly. And that will then end up becoming revenue back to the country. So now that we understand the meaning of this word, talent, how do we even use it? You know, what is considered as a talent? What is your human talent? I think I'll use that because that is the one that is relevant to us as people. Remember that this crude oil is nothing compared to the human talent. The human talent is much more uh, bigger revenue compared to these crude oil. But because we've not been able to consider the human talent in Nigeria. Every year people are coming out of university and KPMG, KPMG told us clearly 
KPMG told us some few weeks back based on these projections. You can see that Nigerians climbing, they're looking for jobs you know, with their big, big grammar, whether good or bad. Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria. My mom has been there as far back as 1979. That's a year after I was born. Sofia. Like I always say, she has been to 23 countries around the world. Her first trip to Bulgaria was 1979. The year after I was born. Nigeria unemployment rate to hit 41% in 2023. Forget about going to church, your mosque, your tradition, and looking for miracle so that you can get that job of your dream. You must be wasting your time. Even if you're setting up your business, the economy is not going to help you. The reason why we need to continue to tell Nigerians is the projection cannot lie. You can lie to yourself, your pastor can lie to you, your traditionalist can lie to you, your imam can lie to you, but we won't tell you lies because it's all about the projection. If you like, you know, pray to God to allow you to get job. You are wasting your time because there is no job in Nigeria because the system was not built as Brazil. You can see that Brazil. Let's go back one step here. You can tell that Brazil is doing more export. That means more Brazilians will be employed. Uh, where is it now? Okay, we need to type that in again. Sorry about that. So let's quickly bring this up again. So more Brazilians get jobs because the country called Brazil has done enough industry. They are industrialized country. So you can tell from this graph that Brazil is doing a lot and that is giving them 288 billion as compared to your crazy country which is only giving us 57.7 .7 billion. So we're going to come back to that video, but I just want us to focus our mind that the reason why this projection, as you can see, sorry, I have to move away from there and come back here again. If you look at what the Director General of the Budget Office has said yesterday, they are lamenting. And when we use the word lament, Let's find the English dictionary and break it down because these are the lies that they don't want you to understand the meaning because they, you know this big, big grammar can be confusing. So when we say... Lament. One more time. Lament. Tabasoke. Lament. Intansonipe. Lament. A passionate expression of grief or sorrow. Nigeria has now become the sorrow state it does not matter how educated, how connected, how your prayer, Nigeria has become a sorry state. Also, we can use the word lament as express passionate grief. So we are already grieving for Nigeria because we know it's dead. But unfortunately, we still have millions of Nigerians that do not understand that there should be repairing the same barrier that we are doing for Nigeria. What they are doing is, we know that Nigeria is dead, we want to bury it. But some people say, no, don't bury it here too. Why do you want, Kweki, why do you want to bury this country yet? I'm still enjoying it now. At the good club, I enjoy it. I do show you, I do get girl, you know, and all that and all that. Even though some of them are criminals. And we know that already. Because, uh, you know, an average Nigerian that is spending that kind of money uh, we know that the money is not coming from a good source. So, as much as it also says express regret or disappointed or disappointment about something, Nigerians do not want to accept the disappointment and the regret that we should allow Nigeria to go and everybody go and develop in their own pace. Some say 
you must be joking. How can you sit in UK and be telling us we can break up Nigeria? Maybe we are enjoying Nigeria. Maybe we are loving Nigeria. Who be you when you can tell us that? But we know because even your people that are in where they have, I mean, imagine only God knows how much this guy is making every month. I mean, you know, for you to be a director general in Nigeria, I don't know how much you're making, but this guy is taking home, you know, a good chunk of money. But he's telling you that uh, this country is becoming unsustainable. I mean, I don't know him. He doesn't know me. But these are the people behind your budget office. For you, as idiot as you are, I'm telling you we should bury Nigeria quickly. You say, no, 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 no. Don't let us bury it quickly. Let's give it another eight years chance because the Yoruba man is there to know who, even though only God knows the kind of uh, injection they are giving him again in Paris that can keep him, because the last time he returned to Nigeria was 15 days ago, and after 15 days, he has to go and do another top-up. And that is the president-elect that we're expecting they would crown on the 29th, and I believe if, uh, if we look at Gwari's uh, record, I think Tinobu once again, I, I greet every one of you. I need to drop down a lot of things there so that we don't lose the broadcast tonight. So let me quickly finish up the talent of the, the meaning of talent. So what is human talent? When we talk about talent, we are referring to somebody. I am referring to any one of you. It does not matter whether you live in Okomaiko. It does not matter whether you live in Bauchi. It does not matter whether you live in Patakot. It does not matter wherever you are in Nigeria. Every Nigerian or the indigenous have a talent. That is if it is not taught properly. Somebody's special ability or gift for learning. Some are talented. Some you have to continue to tell them that this country is not good. They'll tell you, shut up. What's your problem with Shei Tinobu's house in London? Even though the guy is living in uh, Face My Face, you wear the toilet, you have to share with about 20 people. He's telling me to shut up. Where myself in my own beautiful small you know apartment here. If I want to go to the toilet, I don't have to knock the deaf door neighbor and say, I want to shit. Come up, let me make a shit. I don't have to queue to get into the bathroom. My freezer is full up of food. I've just had a long sleep. I just woke up. I have internet. I'm not going uh, I've cut my coat according to my size. But the average Nigerian at home is telling me, shut up. You don't like something good. How are you going to be showing us Shei Tinobu's house? Even though the property itself was a stolen property because the money that they were using to buy that property by Kola Luku was money from your crude oil proceeds or debt. When you look at these, you know, Kola Luku stole money through the Zeni with the crude oil they sold outside the country to any of these countries. I mean, these are the countries that buy your crude oil, okay? So when I click on the crude oil here, these are all the countries, Spain, Netherlands, you know, South Africa. India is buying a lot of our crude oil because they're doing a lot of industrialization there. So you that you continue to say, shut up, Koiki, Tajinia, you don't like, you know, good things. Some are even praying that, that they, imagine somebody in Nigeria is praying that he has the same house like you, it's a good bomb bastard. How are you going to get that kind of house in the midst of country like Nigeria? You must, I think that, is that what your pastor is telling you? Shield, mad people all over the place. Your pastor is telling you you're going to buy a house in a country where everything is going down. <laughs> it's going down. Shout out to my big grandma all the way. She worked in the bank. I'm not going to tell you her name. She has relocated out of Nigeria after a service to go and stay with her grandchildren. She worked in a very, very beautiful bank in Nigeria. I'm not going to tell you the name of the bank. So when we talk about debt, these individuals will be interested in this kind of topic. But another Nigeria say, I will find the way where they, they do this fracas. Because they cannot think beyond their head. This guy is making a lot of money. We'll come back to him. But he's telling you that the Nigerian debt profile is becoming unsustainable. I'm going to give you the meaning of unsustainable because we do a lot of lecture here where we tell you basic things of life. So when we talk about talent, before we close this section, we talk about some are extraordinary intelligent. We, we all know them when we were in secondary school, in university, even from primary school. I don't know whether we still have those talents, but I still see them. You know, there was a young man I saw the daughter 
the man rides on Kada, but the daughter was told, you know, extraordinary. But even if you're not extraordinary, you're expected to be trained, the basic training. You know, you don't you don't need university degree to become a customer service. You know how many Nigerians are here doing checkout with your with your with your B, with your BSc. Do you know how many Nigerians arrive in this country with their first class and they end up cleaning toilet or doing Uber? Probably they then build themselves and then end up getting a job of the first two years. Uh, one of my sisters just arrived in the country. I don't have to tell you details about it. She was lucky to get into the healthcare that got her into the country. And I sent a message to her. I said, I hope you're settling. Ah, Mama, you said to her, to get. So welcome to London. So when we talk about the human talent, it is very, very deep. So, as we know. But something unique about Bulgaria that we were talking earlier is that, is Bulgaria the leading in outsourcing? And again, if you don't know what is outsourcing, outsourcing means that Hoiki Media wants somebody to operate for me in Nigeria. That means more outsourcing share for me. When somebody say about well, I'm not sure, not that they cannot do this actually in America. You know how much it costs? That is actually America. And if they went to my bank, I'm not sure that that the fans go to media. To my own, to see you might do. They get in touch with me. I have somebody I can connect with you. So by an attempt by my way, Christian Dio, I became a man designer in Pasatilo. And I'm not joking now. On a serious note, so you can always reach out to me and you mommy whatever I'm not sure they were abroad. Don't cost you low, don't work. They need the and to my bank outsource it. Me and dear animal so get in touch with me, reliable. I can move a free of my body. This one will be joke. A child I'm sure contain no man who are native me and you alone of him now. This one will disappoint you. They're about to get the uh, body measurement in me if you don't push it. And you agree on the size. I mean, this is what Nigerians should be doing, outsourcing, because end of international America to the UK is quite expensive, and that's why people travel to Nigeria to outsource things. But the problem we have is that, as I am marketing somebody now, is because I can guarantee. It. But again, if Nigeria was great, we should have pool of these designers. That will be doing. Do you know that Indian is the market for a lot of the uh, these designers? Indian is their target. Go on their page. You know all these big big brands. They are doing Indian. You know this year. I don't know. And I'm talking about all the brands now. Go on their Instagram. This is something I checked. I can't remember their names now, but. I'm not a designer person, but I'm talking about outsourcing. So, Yoruba nation that we are asking for, we will be the country where we will outsource things out. But a lot of Yoruba people say, oh, shut up. Don't let us bury Nigeria now. Let's keep the dead body and smell it every day. So, a lot of you are smelling Nigerian dead body because the dead body involves a lot of things. You know, the moment you don't bury your dead person, doesn't matter how how much you love them. Even the Baba Ulo that we love so much, I think my love will do at some point. I think they end up after bury Baba Ulo. If I'm right, because I'm going to go on some no glass or something. I can't remember because I know that he was not buried straight away. They wanted to embalm him, and at some point they were like, nah, 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 nah. "Let's just bury this man. Let him go and sleep." So Nigerians today. Uh, waiting that the dead body will wake up. And the moment somebody is confirmed dead, is dead. But Nigerians do not want to accept that Nigeria is dead. Is dead, is dead. So let's come back again and listen to this man again. So critically, anybody telling you that they are going to fund um, capital is deceiving us. Okay, the man continues to emphasize that anybody that is telling you they are coming to develop they're, you know, they're taking loan. The Buhari is still taking another eight hundred million a million dollar loan. Only God knows what he wants to do with it. The office send it. I'll send it. Jay, Thomas, the Joko, Thomas, no, for the money there. 
So if they keep telling you that we are borrowing money for capital project, let me explain what capital project is quickly. I know I'm opening a lot of things and I don't want this system to crash because we're still managing. So we talked about lament. Uh, so, you know, it just means dead. In Nigeria, it's dead. You know, don't save it again. What is another word for lament? So uh, some common simonies of lament are bemoan, bewail, deploy. While all these words mean to express grief, Nigerians today do not want to accept the grief. Oh, yeah, Peter B is going to come and fix it. You know, look at the way our president looks. He's very fit. Peter B is a criminal because Peter B money was found in Pandora. He could have lived the money in Anambra State, but he knew that Anambra is a shit hole as nowhere and he doesn't want to leave it there. So he actually kept the money in Pandora, you know, somewhere where nobody would see it until Pandora expected, uh, you know, us to know about it. And he cannot defend it. So while all these words mean to express grief, why not allow us to express our grief and bury Nigeria and start afraid? Ah, no, you don't do that to Jagaban, Tidibeni, Sin, Jagaru, Diyuli, the drug baron, you know, blah, 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 blah. They're, they're giving him another injection now. We pray it comes out of it. But there's a lot of news that keeps coming out every time he travels. That you know, Sometimes you're just smelling everywhere. You know, I've been hearing a lot of breaking news. Some are saying, Koiki, what is the breaking news? When they, are, when they are ready, they'll tell you the breaking news. You know, I always say that I don't pray for the death of Tinubu, but the moment they travel out of the country, without, the moment they put him in that coma section, until they revise back, then that's when you know that Tinubu is alive. Because when he goes there, they take him away. He's out. You know, the body, everything is shut down so that they can revive it for you know, May 29. So we pray he gets back to Nigeria so that you can come and become your president. Your pre your president. So it is all about the grief. So we know that. Let me close this because I don't want the system to crash on us. Uh, I'm going to close this as well. Uh, which one is this? Okay, I already got what I need from here. So we're going to come back to this guy. So I think, uh, so we we're still working on this video. So now that I have, so I, we're going to finish the Bulgaria. Somebody is asking, is Bulgaria a leading and sourcing? So I've just given you an example. An example is a lot of Nigerians we go back home because it is cheaper to do that thing from Nigeria and take it to UK. It is cheaper if you're going to do wedding that you go to Nigeria and source the material if possible, sew it there, bring it back. And sometimes by the time they bring back the quality, like, ah, ah, Nigeria, Lutimbo, okay, we understand. It shouldn't be like that. The standard should be high. The standard should be top notch. But because we do not have the, let me say this, the person producing whatever you're telling them to produce in Nigeria, they are brilliant in their own little way. But they are using 1960, uh, you know, technology because they've not been able to adopt the latest technology for whatever you're asking them to do. So, Mubala Montaman Genili, it could be uh, about a plastic bag, about a little combo. By the time the, the plastic bag gets to America, you wonder why you didn't even do it in America in the first place. It's a shithole as the Nigeria it is. It's because the outsourcing is not standard. So, what do you call plastic cup? Oh my, with the America. By the time the bag with America, I feel Nicola, you know, because it is a waste of time. Even though, America also rely on China for a lot of their export. Just as we talked about Brazil, do the same thing. This is Brazil. So Brazil is sending a lot of goods to different parts of the world. So let's look at uh, just one item that Brazil. We talk about the raw sugar. So let's just pick another item quickly. Uh, let's talk about, let's look at soya beans. I believe the northern part of Nigeria should be providing us Soya beans to be export in large quantity. So you can tell that China is buying the large chunk of the soya beans from Brazil. So China is paying $27 billion. That is a huge amount of money. That is why they will crumble America in the long run because China is also saying, we don't want to be spending dollar. Brazil, can I use another? And that is why there's what they call the BRICS. How many people have heard about the BRICS? There's some country called the BRICS country. So it's called China. 
Russia, Brazil, India, South Africa. More countries want to join. And the meaning of BRICS, I'll tell you. So if you've never heard about the BRICS country, you know, I want to hear that from me today. BRICS is an acronym for the five leading economies. Whether we like it or not, I don't know how long it's going to take, maybe another 30 years, but dollar is fading away. Dollar will not be the mode of, uh, you know, uh, uh, operation or the mode of transaction in the long run, especially with the fight going on in Russia versus the West. Because Russia is not fighting Ukraine, Russia is fighting the West. And this could lead to World War Three. We pray not, but expect anything as we live in this world today. So BRICS is the acronym for five leading countries, you know, five leading economies, which Brazil is one of them, Russia is one of them. Remember I told you that Indian is the one buying majority of our crude oil. Remember where is that here? Yeah. So let's go back to our export. So when we look at Nigerian crude oil today, from the export table, Indian, because Indian is the leading economy. So when something is a leading economy, they don't care about the pollution, they continue to produce because we all need to continue to live. So Indian is one of them. We talked about Brazil, you can tell because Brazil is doing very well based on the projection we told you earlier, 288 billion. Nigeria should be in that same category, but Nigeria is as useless as tissue paper but we don't want to bury it because we are wasting our time. The quicker we bury Nigeria, the better for every single one of us in the long run. But those that are saying that, no, 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 we don't want to bury Nigeria. Let me bring you back again to Bulgaria. This is still Koiki Media Live. A very good morning to those of you that are still with us. It is now coming up to 3 o'clock in the morning here in the UK. Uh, it could be different times zone around the world. And if we have looked at my time clock now, I I think we have done just about one hour, 23 minutes. So give and take, this program will end mm, an hour less or thereabout. So, but I'm still a little bit okay because I slept um, very well before coming out. Yes, Kristen Dior. So when you go and look at Kristen Dior, thank you so much the back end. So when you look at India, I'm sorry, I have to, can talk about that quickly and let's talk about Chris, uh, Kristen Dior. Dior, the fashion show. You'll be, a, you'll be amazed. You can see Dior goes to India. This was this year. Why is this brand going to India and not Nigeria? Because Nigeria is not ready for them. Nigeria is a shit hole as tissue paper. A lot of you don't want to bury it. We are going to bury it on your behalf. You can tell. This is it. Dior creative director. When they say something is creative, there are some people within the Yoruba that are creative, but they want to keep Nigeria, even though Nigeria is not working for us. Why not leave Nigeria? Somebody like Bola Tinovo is creative. It's, you know, we can't deny that. But the problem is Bola Tinovo wants to keep Nigeria and use all his talent, all his resources, and he was able to get there, but until May 29, He's still president elect, and like I said, uh, we pray that he comes out of the game from France because each time he goes there, there's a lot of information that comes out. Sometimes we have to verify it very well, and we cannot break. We can only say breaking news, but we don't have to give you all the full details. But right now, we just pray, but he comes back again to Nigeria because when he goes out of Nigeria, he's in Paris. Bola Tinobu is as dead as anything until we see his body again coming out to Nigeria. So as far as we're concerned, Bola Tinobu is gone. Bump, only about to buy that day. And that's a fact. Because when he goes, they put him in coma. He doesn't know what is happening around him anymore. He's as dead as anything. And when I mean dead, it's not like officially dead, but he's as dead. So, Christian Dior, creative director, Maria Garcia, is one of the most on orthodox designers working today not really she is but you know you know these, these people they just project themselves like that we are 
the person where they talk about that can show your clothes. She can be best than Christian Dior, but is she going to get opportunity in Nigeria? No. Because we have not projected her out. So like I said, enter what you're not sure we are in the power that consume it. To connect him and to my to my be serious with some of my brother and which Christian Dior or not. I'm not joking, and I have evidence to back that up. So the bad news of the film, no, come and look with the new designer of the quality of the daddy. Just give her the material. If she doesn't damage your material, you will be surprised the results. That is called outsourcing. Waris is just saying, I show Kiwa Pa Ju Bubu. My grandma saw that I shook it for a very long time before she died. Yeah, so rest in peace. So, just not to bore you too much on Christian Dior, because that's not my problem here. But let me just show you their images. So, this is what is happening now between India and Christian Dior. Thank you so much, the back end team. I didn't even realize you posted that earlier. So, you can tell that India is a world leading economy. That is why. And it's not only for this reason. I have looked at it from the spiritual perspective. So Christian Dior is going to India on a spiritual level as well. But that's a different conversation. And not everybody can understand that. And when I mean spiritual, I'm not talking about your Christian now. I'm not talking about your Muslim. Just leave that aside. I'm talking about their culture. There is an energy that the designers today are connecting with India. And it's got to do with their culture. So don't come here and come and tell me about Christian and Muslim. No, I'm not talking about their culture. So you can go on their Instagram page. I'm not promoting them because I'm not their brand ambassador. I wish I was. I'll be making a lot of money from them. So we'll just leave it like that, just for you to understand. So again, let's go quickly about the BRICS that we were talking about. So Brazil, Russia, they are trying to get more countries together. The BRICS, the first four were initially grouped as BRIC in 2001 by Goldman Sachs Economics G. O. Neil, who coined the term to describe the fast growing economies that will collectively dominate the global economy in 2050. So we are now in 2023. By 2050, forget it, America will probably still be there. But like I said, things is going to change. Nigeria will not be there. That is if Nigeria is still existing. So when you look at 2050 to 2023 that we are now, how many more years? Five is there. Uh, my brain is now. Okay, let's put there. Seven. Four. Okay, uh, two. So in 27 years from now, the world is going to change. The America that we know Canada, the UK, that's why they have to destabilize some part of the other region. That's why they're not going to want Nigeria to break. By 27 years from now, if I add that to my age today, I will be clocking around about 70. God spared our life. So you want me to be still telling you that Nigeria is not working. When by that 27 years, we should have started developing a new nation under a very... Yes, 20, yeah, 27 years. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. IDDG. By the time I add up to my own age, I'll be 70 plus. So the question is, where do you want me to look up to Yoruba land in 27 years? In, you might think that, and in these 27 years, Bola Tinobu is going to use 8 years. So, minus 27, quickly, 27 minus 8, what's that going to give us? So, 1, 17, uh, that will be 9. So, there will be 9 years left. Thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin. Russia will help liberate any nation that will want to pay. So, 19. So by the time Tinubu used eight years, we have 19 years. So it goes back to the north, the northern part of Nigeria. They use eight years. These are the way you need to think. You know, don't think about Tinubu now. Think about eight years from now. So 19 minus eight, 
that's 9 minus 8, that's 1, 11. So 11 years, then it comes back to the southwest. So the southeast have come to just be looking. They must all be joking. So after Bola Tinubu has completed his term in 27 years, which we have looked at, so we are looking at the projection of Nigeria by 2050. From now, it's 27 years. So let me let me recap so that they might get lost. Okay? And let me just put it here with this depth ratio so that, you know, Buari is seeking another 800 million. So I don't know how much Tinubu we have to borrow to stabilize the situation because there's no money in Nigeria. But Tinubu will have money to move around you know, with his family, with the ministry, the ministers, and all that. So in 27 years, between 2023 and 2015, and thank you so much, Mr. Adedeji. So we have 27 years between now and 2015. You might think it's a long time. It's not. The only problem is some of us will be old, some of us will have died, some of us will be alive. I don't know. Only a little Mary knows who is going to be dead between now and the next 27 years. But I pray that every one of us is alive and also our parents and those that are old, they can continue to be old. I spoke to a grandma this evening. She's 90, 90 something years old, if I'm right, in America. I, I used to think that. The grandma that I speak to, she now say, ah, you me over, ki grandma no. Ah, me. She wa lie. Wow. So that is like two generations because I want to be more so you can but they are all in America. They can't go back to Nigeria. The Nigeria is not working. So about three generations or probably four generations are now stuck in America. So the question is, me Joel, I think you do problem in your daily. So in 27 years, Bola Tinubu will use 8 years, Aku 19, as we have break it down. Nino 19 years, Aku 8 years, Aku 11. So Aku is it going to be between the Igbo or the Yoruba again? Or is there going to be a crisis that will break up the shit whole country and will bury it once and for all? Buari 6, Senate approval for Nigeria to borrow $800 million from the World Bank. Let me just complete the Bulgaria and close that chapter once and for all. Bulgaria is a popular outsourcing destination and with good reason. It has a mature BPO sector, large talent pool. I've given you the full meaning of talent. I don't have to go back into that. It also has a business culture similar to the Western countries. It makes it highly sought after destination for startups as well as a large company. So even me, I can go to Bulgaria and start up there, set up a small company, employ Bulgarians, come back to UK. If you call Koiki Media, it takes you to Bulgaria. When this should be happening in Nigeria? Look, the reason why we are struggling is I don't have to be in my desk all the time. You call my number, it takes you to Nigeria. Somebody picks it up. Hello, welcome to Koiki Media. How can we help you? Or, Ekabo, sorry, Koiki Media. Somebody say it will be 71, God's willing. So probably we're almost the same age. Thank you so much. The outsourcing is one of the biggest way that Nigeria will have hit the market, but because Nigeria is not prepared for that. So we close that. So now that we have these amount of Nigerians just sleeping, waking up, you know, some of them are praying. Them. I don't know what they are doing, but we know that 41% of you which I've calculated about 4 million Yoruba out of these are the same, you know, working. We'll come back to that. So we know from this projection that the world is changing. And that is why uh, BRICS collectively, not single, collectively, that is why China is not against what Russia is doing. South Africa is not against it. Indian is not against it. Brazil is not against it. In as much as war has devastated a lot of lives. But the projection of the BRICS is that between these family called Brazil, Russia, India, and China, South Africa was added along the line in 2010. That is nine years after. I don't know whether South Africa is still up there, but they're still doing very well. 
So the BRICS collectively would dominate the global economy by 2050, which is just 27 years from now. God spare our lives. We don't have to get uh, a lot of that. Good morning, my family. You have to go to the Let's bury Nigeria now so that by that time, our life will be meaningful. But you don't want to bury Nigeria. Okay, I will be here in the UK. It's a pension for me. And then you know my one you come down because I will be able to be shouting like this at 70 years old. Uh, 70 years old man. Like, you know, my father will But I believe that we'll be gone by then. Ah, quick in Baluma why that I live with a little married. Because when we were telling you you should all push, this woman came destroyed part of the movement, telling you other than where you want to go in the country. You know, some of you are a long joke of she should go to the program here. And so projection for you in your console We are telling you how things operate around the world. Don't sit down and listen to Share Koribe and all these, you know, born idiot that doesn't understand anything. Even in Gile. She was in a she changed Gile to one talking and she only she was in a pretty country that was fair operating. The thing that they're talking about to but if we look at government, do you know how many local governments do I mean no state work on? Um, I want to be a country. Uh, I want to be a country. I did not know. <laughs> so that woman is living in a cuckoo land. I don't know what it's called a country. He just my local government from Benin State Cocoon. He had a guru. Huh? Well, I don't know why. She don't know. I don't know. You know. They sit on there. They talk. They the thing they are talking to idiots. Even why they give idiots? Look at the projection. Things comes with you know data statistics. This is why we are different on this platform. And I don't have any regret. Whatever I say. They are already looking at the projection that in twenty fifty these breaks will dominate. Do you think that America will be happy? How can we dominate against them? Do you think UK will be happy? Or we leave that for whatever is going to happen. Let's come out of that. So let's come back again here to these our uh, video. The video I can lower. Uh, where is our video depth ratio? Let's come back here again. Even the accountant general, you are saying that you are boring to personality. If you look at this politically, if our revenue profile Based on past bank performances, it's about 5.5 to 6 trillion. And we're going to be spending 10.3 trillion naira. Listen to him very well. And that way you will understand that Nigeria is just floating. One day, I don't know if we work up or sink in Jokon, like Titanic. One day, if care is not taken, and debt and non debt recurrent expenses, not capital project. That simply means from the day one, we have a four trillion naira deficit on recurrent expenditure that is not on capital project. This is not sustainable. Is this an error in judgment, or is this something that we can blame uh, the system or personalities for? What the system? And on leadership, let us be. The leadership, as Olori Buruku say, Baba, let me give you this background of Olori Buruku, Fulani man, that even Femi Adeshina told us that when Buhari came for eight months, Buhari was nowhere to be found. You know why? Because this is where Buhari was spending his time in this. So while I will play in that video, you don't need to see the man. Just look at Buari. That's all you need to know. Let me expand it a little bit for you all. Okay, I wanted to play Ike Kirimadu there. Maybe we should play Ike Kirimadu. This was the last interview of Ike Kirimadu. Can guarantee that. No doubt uh, Peter is our, is our son, but we need to be dynamic. You ask yourself, can Peter win the presidential election? Can the East afford to throw away their votes? Can we afford to be sentimental in matters that concern our, our, our people and our children and our future? 
The answer is no. So we don't intend to do a thing which we will regret in the future. So why we believe that Peter is heavily qualified? We believe that the future of our people relies on PDP, at least in the next eight years. So we need to take, make, make that decision as, as the leaders of our people. And we're going to sit with them and explain to them. Okowa, of course, is one of us. So there's no difference between Okowa and Peter in terms of protecting the interests of the South, including the South and the South-South. Okay? So we're going to give the, um, uh, the people of our, um, the Southeast all the opportunity and meeting with Okowa so that he also has to speak to them. But we're going to be on ground to talk to our people and guarantee Okowa that he'll be there for our people. I beg if anybody understand that music, can you just help me translate it in the comment section because I can't understand that music. That was the last interview. Ike Kirimadu would not be back in Nigeria even after Palatinovo has completed his eight years. What an amazing God. <laughs> That was the last interview Iki Kirimadu granted before he was arrested here in London and he has now been sentenced guilty. <laughs> you can see that a lot is going to happen. Iki Kirimadu will not see Nigeria for the next 10 years. He'll be here in UK. Even if they release him on half term of his prison sentence, he will still be here in UK. We leave that and just I'm going to leave the image of Wari Dese Baba while we listen to this man again. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is quite interesting. Nigeria is just that drunken sailor. So you don't need to see the guy behind. Just be looking at Buhari. And that is a timeline that Buhari spent when he came to London throughout this period of presidency. Volatinovo has not even started. He's currently somewhere in Paris where he doesn't know what is happening around him. He's dead gone until he revives again. Only God knows how many days it will be on that, whatever they're putting on him. Assets. A palm plantation worth about 1.8 trillion. 1.8 billion. Rather than go to Claire to have versus to go to Caesar to do a loading process. That is the kind of let me tell you this country has huge potentials. Or, or you can say that it's like a, a drunken soul whose father has a plantation of uh, uh what, 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 what do you drink? Uh, palm. Is it palm? I mean, yes, palm. Raffia palm. Raffia palm. Yes, the plantation is there. Massive, one thousand hectares. And, and with that plantation, rather than sell it, it is drinking. The wine. Just drinking the wine. Just drinking and the then wine. when any tree dies, he allows it to die. God bless then you. Then goes sir. to the next tree, drinks it to God bless you, sir. And then it's at the end of the day, he has left the father gave him a plantation. He has now left it a desert. Exactly. This is a country with huge potential. Let me tell you, it's very simple. The six point eight trillion that we waste or going to can actually be cut down by sixty percent. How? Very simple. 4.1 trillion is for the salaries and wages and pension. The remaining 2. Point something trillion is the profligacy and corruption, travel expenses, newspapers, or whatever that can be called. Medical like. trips. Medical trips. Um, convoy of 1,000 vehicles for those officials that are not supposed to be. So, we are just discussing uh, the problem with this, the chief right. justice right. and so on. One of their problems is actually one of these. Sorry about that. I have to uh, come up on my seat uh, without even saying I was coming up. Apology there. So, as we are seeing from these mad projections, for those that still believe in Nigeria, I am not one of those. And Nigeria is not going to change anytime soon, even in 27 years from today. We are just about almost two hours into the program. Uh, we might not go as far as I want tonight, 
But I just want us to be rest assured that Nigeria is not visible anymore to work. So I'm going to remove the image of Buhari quickly uh, so that we can wrap it up under two hours. So we only have about 15 minutes left. Uh, I won't do more than that tonight. It's already a long day. We are happy that we are still able to give you as much as different angle on the Yoruba Nation. The Yoruba Nation is only the way out. Uh, you can watch this video on the Arise, uh, you know, analyzing the Nigerian debt profile. You know, we can go on, it's about 18 minutes. We've done about five minutes out of it. I think that is more than enough. Now, let's quickly talk about the new loan Buhari wants to get from, uh, you know, the West or the World Bank, you know, precisely. So, Buhari is seeking the Senate, the rubber stamp, to allow approval for him to borrow $800 million before he goes in just under 19 days or whatever is left. Today is the 12th. And politicians, it's all about them. You know, when they wear this agenda, you think that they are talking something meaningful. It's not everything they are talking is about them. You know, it's all about them. It doesn't, they don't care about you. You know, if you think that they care about you, you are wasting your time. So let's read that quickly. Uh, President Mamadou Buhari Wednesday, yesterday, asked the Senate to approve a fresh $800 million loan from the World Bank to enable its administration sustain a social investment program for poor and vulnerable Nigerians. Bomb bastard. Did you hear that? <laughs> Buhari wants to borrow $800 million so that a UTAB party and a vulnerable this comment comes just as the director general of the budget office, Mr. Ben, this guy, is telling us that our debt profile is becoming unsustainable, but Buhari care less about that. Google still wants to borrow $800 million. Buhari, in a letter that was read at the preliminary by the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, another bomb buster full animal that should not be there, Explain that the approval of the loan will specifically enable its government to continue with the conditional cash transfer window of the program. He said the government will transfer the sum of 5,000 naira per month to 10.2 million poor and low. Imagine they are borrowing loan. Buari wants to borrow his last loan and give you 5,000 naira and then I will be part of those that will pay that loan in the next 14 years. 10.2 million poor and low income household for a period of another six months with a multiply effect on about 60 million individuals. Buari said in order to guarantee the credibility of the process, digital transfer will be made directly to beneficiaries account and the mobile wallet. So the one that have been giving them they didn't put it as digital wallet or mobile transfer or bank transfer. All they've done is they've just given cash to people that probably they don't even know. Remember, they were moving cash. So, but this time around, Buhari said, oh, no, never worry. I'm going to make sure we send the C, you know, any you know, true bank or digital wallet. Part of the letter read, it is with pleasure that I forward the above subject to you. Please note that the Federal Executive Council, what is not at home, so this is what a uh, short man devil, you see about doing, that, that, that lawyer that he called himself, that bomb bastard, that Yoruba bomb bastard. Part of the letter, it is with the pleasure that I forward the above subject to you. I'm sure it's uh, Sibaja that drafted this letter. Please know that the Federal Executive Council fake approve, and because Buhari is not at home, so Sibaja approved this under fraudulent government. Additional loan facility to the tune of $800 million to be secured from the World Bank. So you think now that World Bank want Nigeria to break. We must all be living in denial. For the National Social Safety Net Program, NASP, there is a need for the request for your consideration and approval to ensure early, early implementation the Senate may wish to note that the program 
is intended to expand coverage of shock responsive safety net support among the poor and the vulnerable Nigerians. This will assist them in coping with the cost of meeting basic needs. You may wish to know that the Federal Government of Nigeria under the Commissioner Cash Transfer window of the program will transfer the sum of 5,000 Naira per month to 10.2 million poor and low-income households for a period of six months with multiply blah, 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 blah. Let's close that. Because we're coming to the end of the program. Let's talk about this as well in under a minute. Once a country's debt service ratio exceeds 30%, that country is in trouble and we are already pushing towards 100%. And that tells you how much trouble. I mean, normally the ratio is 30%. Ratio T, I'm not sure my way, I tell you what, only 30, but Nigeria is already 100%. So you can tell that you that you are thinking that whatever we are saying here is a waste of time. I'm just sitting here, you should go and do something. I will be here and I will be telling you, you have chopped your breakfast. Even if somebody dies, I will laugh at you all because at the end of the day, we have told you that bastard country needs to be buried, but a lot of you are disagreeing with us. So I'm not going to pity any one of you, okay? It's no matter wherever you are. The Director General Budget Office of the Federation, Ben Akabuzu, Akabuizi, yesterday raised the alarm that Nigeria was fast exceeding its limited borrowing space. Akabuizi, who spoke at the induction of the newly elected lawmakers of the 10th National Assembly that will all be having salary that is, you know, big, 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 big salary every month that all different kind of other things that will never want to let Nigeria break. And this is where you are waiting for them to break Nigeria. So that is about it tonight. Uh, and then on the Yoruba Nation, like I always say, it is still an ongoing. It does not matter how long it's going to take us to get out of Nigeria. All I can say to everyone is we have a lot of work to do. I am doing mine. Do yours. Work with different groups. Try to do your best to tell somebody that the country you love so much is not working. Nigeria is at the verge of wake up. The debt ratio alone will push Nigeria into a big problem. Good evening once again to every one of you that have joined. I've not been able to greet you properly. I am now ending the program in just seven minutes because it's time now for me to you know, head back and relax. Shout out to those of you on the MixLR, Alao Baba, and the rest of you. Thank you so much to uh, God Last Brown. Thank you so much to Lord Mo Adedeji. Thank you so much uh, to my beautiful mother. Good evening to those of you. Okay, Ola, uh, Kemi 6258, Aristo 1993, Nisha Naga, those of you on Twitter, um, Waris Jinadu, uh, Mrs. Yabo, Lupu Milu Wale, Grandma Comfort, Adile Ye, Grandma. Uh, and also another big grandma that lives with her as well. And the rest of those of you that we've not mentioned, we well, appreciate each and every one of you. Good evening to you, Apa Uma, Mrs. Timilola Bedo. Good evening to you, Mrs. Kemi Fashola. Good evening to you, Obara Olaku, Emmanuel Jr., Femi Adeyemi, and um, every single one of you. Buari has damaged Nigeria so much that even Tinobu will probably just have to take extra booster to be able to sort out the depth of Nigeria. I know you love Tinobu, but the depth doesn't love Tinobu because Buari is trying to take the remaining depth and put everything on him as well. Real one, Mustafa, thank you so much. And this is a freedom, freedom, Ulua family. Thank you so much. I believe we have people on other side that we don't normally mention your name. Let me quickly see if you're there and then uh, this one is this one there. I'll read that. So let's see quickly before I go. Uh, Tinobu will probably be shaped with phone. Please don't take another loan. I think it was if they sort it out. But in reality, Nigerians do not believe until everything drops on them. Uh, thank you so much to every one of you that have joined me tonight uh once again to my beautiful mother 
that have stayed with us on the live transmission. And I think that is about it. Uh, but sometimes we miss some of you that are there with us. Uh, shout out to Aziz. I believe I saw you there as well. If you think that this month is done already, yeah, Buari is in London with us. Thank you so much. Mrs. Esther Olawale, thank you so much. I believe that is about all the names I can say. Uh, my name is Alami Koiki. Enjoy the rest of your time wherever you are. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow where we will continue the Yoruba Nation conversation. We appreciate all our leaders that are working you know, quietly. The depth ratio in Nigeria is just that great. And on that note, I say, Odaro, Kuna Yola Masu. Eto kwa dewa ni, la, la gbara ti, ele du mare, a joke a ye, a shake on. Oba to le ni, oba to lano, oba to ni le Yoruba, bugon to nje, ile Yoruba, ube ni to ba so kwe, ko ni bosi. A mwa la le, a mwa ni le, a mwa 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 yilo. You're not too much. You're not too much. You're not too much.